Good morning to you. Behind this mask is Father Jim. And we'll open our liturgy this morning with hymn number 314 in your hymnal, Gather Your People, number 314. Gather your people, O Lord, Gather your And we as one com community in Christ continue together in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of Jesus Christ, the love of our God, the fullness, the holiness of the Spirit of God be with each and every one of you. And my dear sisters and brothers, we acknowledge that we are sinners, even though we may not know each other in the company of each other, we recognize that we are looking for the opportunity to be one with God, reconciled with God, and praise Him. Lord Jesus, You are the Son of God, and You have come into our world to give Yourself that we might be redeemed. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, help us to be open to you, that we can know our place in you with all humility to want to serve and to love you and one another. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, let our lives be lives of reconciling, that we bring each other to a sense of being redeemed and saved and brought to love. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. And let us pray together to our most loving, ever-present God. Almighty, ever-living God, who by a singular grace gave the priest, St. Pius, a share in the cross of your Son, and by means of his ministry, renewed the wonders of your mercy. Grant that through his intercession, we may be united constantly to the suffering of Christ, and so brought happily to the glory of the resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Proverbs. Every word of God is tested. He is a shield to those who take refuge in him. Add nothing to his words, lest he reprove you, and you will be exposed as a deceiver. Two things I ask of you. Deny them not to me before I die. Put falsehood and lying far from me. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Provide me only with the food I need. Lest being full, I deny you saying, Who is the Lord? 
or being in want, I steal and profane the name of my God. The word of the Lord. Your word, O Lord, is a lamp for my feet. Your word, O Lord, is a lamp for my feet. Remove from me the way of falsehood and favor me with your law. Your word, O Lord, is a lamp for my feet. The law of your mouth is to me more precious than thousands of gold and silver pieces. Your word, O Lord, is a lamp for my feet. Your word, O Lord, endures forever. It is as firm as the heavens. Your word, O Lord, is a lamp for my feet. From every evil way I withhold my feet, that I may keep your word. Your word, O Lord, is a lamp for my feet. Through your precepts I gain discernment, therefore I hate every false way. Your word, O Lord, is a lamp for my feet. Falsehood I hate and abhor, your love I love. Your law I love. Your word, O Lord, is a lamp for my feet. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus summoned the twelve and gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. And he sent them to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. He said to them, Take nothing for the journey, neither walking stick, nor sack, nor food, nor money, and let no one take a second tunic. Whatever house you enter, stay there and leave from there. And as for those who do not welcome you, when you leave that town, shake the dust from your feet in testimony against them. Then they set out and went from village to village, proclaiming the good news and curing diseases everywhere. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord. I, have, I keep having to remind myself that I'm not only speaking to the people in present before me, but also to you people who are receiving this through cyberspace at home. And thank you for being a part of this. Each of us has a particular vocation in life. You know, moms and dads, that's a vocation. To be children in the family, that's a vocation. It goes further, doesn't it? Somebody might be a seamstress, somebody a carpenter, somebody becomes an executive to run a company. All of us have something that we are to do. But notice that just about all those different vocations, those different ways of living outside our own homes are part-time. My dear people, we are also very much like the apostles in this morning's, morning's gospel, 
We are ministers of God, ministers of the Spirit of God, ministers of the Word of God to people, to one another. It cannot be part-time. It can't be something that we do now and then. It has to be something that we give ourselves over to completely. It has to be the thing that kind of takes over your life. I know I have to remind myself of that, that as a priest, I can't be a part-time priest. I have to live whatever it is that is that manifests priesthood, the service of God. And hence, we have to be very, very mindful that ours has to be a vocation, a spirit of generosity, humility and generosity, that we're willing to give of ourselves no matter what, because somehow or other we have to identify ourselves with what it is that God wants to have happen in our world. It isn't happening. It isn't happening. Have you, have you noticed? I mean, the United States of America used to be called a Christian nation. I don't think we can really manifest, we can really acclaim that anymore. We've let it go. We've let it go. And we have to redeem it. We have to be the people, the people of Jesus Christ, who are willing to give ourselves over to prayer, to service, to selflessness, to generosity, giving Christ in our words, in our attitudes, in our thoughts. It all has to be have something to do with the manifest spirit of God in our world. It's here, and we have to trust that it's here. We have to trust that God is sending us out as he did those 12 apostles. Maybe they, how prepared did they feel they were? But we are prepared as well, as well as they were, and we are to, to just kind of let go and let Jesus Christ be manifest in our lives. So let us pray. You know, I think of all the times that we have petitions and most of the time the petitions are given by one or two people and you know each of us has petitions so it's an invitation by our God to let go of our, our service for the moment and to, to let him listen. For all those who need our prayers, I think most especially we might forget about this part but with all that goes on in our world right now, doctors, nurses who are giving of themselves, that they need our prayers. So we pray for their, their perseverance and their willingness to trust and serve our God. We pray to the Lord. And for all those, I would, I would think you'd have to call them courageous people. Sometimes you wonder if they're that. But all those courageous people who have deemed it that there is, it's their role to run for, for public office in our world, whether it's sheriff, council person, president, pray that they might have an understanding that they're running into a place called service and it will need a lot of self-sacrifice and a lot of humility. We pray to the Lord. In thanksgiving for our own opportunity to come together as a community in prayer and to really exercise that prayer vocation, we pray to the Lord. For those who are ill at this time, especially those who are suffering from this virus that keeps us wearing masks and social distancing, that they may be healed, that they may be cured, that they may be recognized as people of God, we pray to the Lord. 
for those who have died, those especially who have been good to us or that we have known in our families, among our friends. We especially remember this morning Marilyn Kjalpakowski, that each of them may know that fullness of God's life in eternity, full time. We pray to the Lord. For any intentions in your hearts, we just take a moment to allow those to, to be manifested in your thoughts. For all these needs, we pray to the Lord. And let us close our prayer petitions with our Hail Mary. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Earth, work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, who is our loving Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands. The praise and glory of God's name, good and good of all God's holy church. Receive, O Lord, the offerings placed upon your altar in commemoration of blessed pious, that as you brought him glory, you may, through these sacred mysteries, grant us your pardon through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as on the festival of St. Pius, you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life, teach her by his words of preaching, and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. Thus, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim together, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are endlessly at work that our human race may become holy just as you are holy. Look now upon your people's offerings and pour out on them the power of your Spirit that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in, him, in whom we too are your sons and your daughters. Indeed, though we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love. For your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were stretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, Jesus took bread. And giving you thanks, he took, broke the bread and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, Jesus took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine and once more giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and his resurrection, and looking forward to his second coming, we offer you who are our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you our human race. Look kindly, most compassionate God, on all you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son and grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, as we partake of this one bread and one chalice, we may be gathered into one body in Christ who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart together with Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles, with St. Pius, and with all your saints, and with our deceased sisters and brothers whom we humbly commend to your mercy, then freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At our Savior's command, and formed by his divine teaching, we dare to pray together our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant us peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And just take a moment within to express that need for peace in our world and that we want to grant that to each other. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of our world. Blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
And let us pray together. May partaking at the heavenly table, almighty God, confirm and increase strength from on high in all who celebrate the feast day of blessed pious Padre Pio, that we may preserve in integrity the gift of faith and walk in the path of salvation you trace for us through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go now in the spirit of Jesus Christ. And we will conclude our Mass this morning with hymn number 314, 314. Gather your people and let us sing verse 4. 314, verse 4. Gather your people, O Lord, gather your